Another question for from Ethan Hedford. Shad, as the author, what's your biggest fear in regards to this short film? That I won't like it when it's made. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm confident in these guys and I'm really excited that um, they'll be able to make something phenomenal and we're all going to be doing our best to do it but there's always that chance you know and so uh, we're, we're get, we're, we'll be doing our best to avoid it that's 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 our commitment right um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that's basically filmmaking's hard mm -hmm. oh yeah it is yeah absolutely it is and it's a lot of planning and that's w one thing that people don't consider a lot of time the blame goes against the actors or against the director but there are so many cogs in a, the filmmaking industry there are gonna be more than 50 people working on that short film mm. uh, it can't be the fault of one person if something goes wrong and it can't be the fault of one person if everything goes mm. right it, yeah it goes um, an interesting ways. example of something sorry sorry were you i didn't don't want to cut you off um i was just saying an interesting example is like i know i i will criticize movies when they butcher certain elements of realism like armor design is is a one that usually comes up if it's out of period or it out, looks like absolute garbage and things and uh, and the question is like like how does this get past you know um inspection to land in the in a film and there was one um uh, pi like i like, like picture that just looked horrendous and i forget the film i the, it was the same actor that played kylo ren in the recent star wars films and he was wearing this breastplate that just looked horrendous and uh, it turns out the reason for that one this is this is word of mouth it could be wrong but i'm just repeating something that someone told me so but it, it does uh, um play like uh, onto what you were saying they're doing is that turns out in that film the uh, people getting the uh, the props and everything ended up only having a couple of weeks to get everything ready by time of shooting and they had just rush everything and unfortunately the byproduct is that things looked horrible but they did the best they could with the circumstances and time they had still look pretty bad but they, but that explains it and those are the difficulties that people can run into and i can so. uh, say something about that uh, when we went to our uh, partners that are going to ma manufacture the costumes, um, they told us that we were some of the most organized they've worked with so far because they've worked with so many projects that arrive one week or two before the, the shooting dates and that ask, well, we have no budget and we have no time for you to make the costumes but make something that is 100% custom <laughs> good luck right um mm. and we've had uh, talks with uh, weapon manu manufacturers as well who are like well it can take weeks or months to create weapons or armor that are going to be decent and productions come in and just want that to be done in two days or something like that FN Hedford that's asking Shad what rank of the sword do you think you would be? Low. <laughs> you know what? I have a more I have a stronger book um, um, understanding of swordsmanship than practical and I and I also I like to hedge my bets because uh, um, to get a to be able to state exactly where I am at with my swordsmanship ability, I would want to have been tested far more more recently than I have been. But I, do, I have uh, scant opportunities to keep up training, and so because of that, I uh, tend to uh, uh, purposely err on the side of uh, uh, giving a lower estimation of where my swordsmanship would be at. So if I ever do have a sparring match that ends up as a video, and I, I, I there's a chance I might oh, perform better. But if I don't, I didn't set anyone's expectations on my own too high, and so I'm safe. But my academic understanding of swordsmanship is uh, is huge, of course. And uh, I sometimes I just watch Ema duels and fight scenes and just kind of deconstruct what they're doing in slow motion because I'm so engaged and I love what they're doing. And then you know trying to understand differences uh, between Fiore and Lichtenauer and all those all those fun things. Um, 
and stuff. Uh, but what about you, Lloyd? Because um, that is a question that can be applied to you as well. Where do you think you are as a swordsman? Uh, right. Was there, is there a scoring system from your book? Is that, is that what the question was phrased is? Well, there actually is, but I only mainly mentioned the, um, the masterships. <laughs> my, my son is... Okay. Um, uh, um, I don't know. If, if I go to a HEMA uh, uh, competition, I do have a silver medal for HEMA over there, um, I will generally not win because it tends to be a set of rules which have to be brought in for, partly for safety and there are people who are more sort of athletic and more competitive than me and you usually have I don't know, it's first to ten or something, so you, there are lots of... Um, but I like to think, and maybe here I'm just trying to self-justify and self-aggrandize, I don't know, but I like to think that if ever I were in a real fight where it's just first to one, and it's absolutely no holds barred, then I am actually quite good at doing something that the other guy really wasn't expecting. It's but funny. A, I've kind of yeah. I get what you're saying. In a competition, that 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 that'll get you a point, mm -hmm. and then he's then he's seen that trick and he won't fall for it again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I, outside of a competition, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, but, that's I, I get exactly what you're saying because that's actually a lot. Sometimes I think about that a lot as well, and you go through scenarios because you're right. It's like in a real fight, it's whoever gets the first hit in, and then all right, what's kind of a yeah, like, good point there, sir. I, I I, one one of my most successful techniques when fighting people who are not familiar with me is not stopping. Uh, mm -hmm. What everyone expects you to do is walk up to 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 measure distance and then stop because that's what everybody does. They fought a thousand bites, bouts, and that's what everyone does. So they have their sword, they walk to here, and then they stop, and then they do this for a bit. Mm -hmm. And I find that, um, again, he won't fall for it twice, but if I just walk up to him and then just don't stop and hit him, it, whoa, shit, he did, what the hell? <laughs> Catching him off guard. Yeah, um, and I've, yeah. It's and I, I, I particularly remember once it was a big group thing, and I, I routed a group of about 10 people by just by walking straight at the first guy and not stopping. And, and it just, there was this bamboozling effect. He then fell back, and then everyone else fell back. And thought, this is quite effective, this. Uh, but of course, I wasn't in any actual danger of actually dying. Mm -hmm. So would I ever have done that in real life? Yeah, that is the that's the question, isn't it? Like, it's it's hard to try and see, like, even comment on what how we would perform if it's really real, I am a, or that any such an event would ever happen. So, hmm. um, in in I mean, one one major thing that you can do in a real fight, which reenactors won't do, Ahima people won't do, is you destroy the other guy's kit, you smash his shield up, you bend his sword. Hmm. You uh, and there are an awful lot of techniques which which involve just destroying the other guy's kit. But uh, if you did that to a reenactor or a hemo, he'd be seriously pissed off with you, and with good reason. So, oh yeah, yeah that, absolutely. That, that one's yeah. that one's off the off the menu of options. And the other thing that um, uh, and th this is not me saying it. This is actually you know hemo practitioners who have openly mentioned it is uh, um, a difficulty to try and keep realistic is. Uh, fighting after a, after getting hit okay because usually yeah. you can actually risk getting hit if it leaves your person open for a more devastating counter attack um mm -hmm. but with point general point scoring systems they can't account for that because you can't determine how lethal a hit was or if it was survivable and other things like that and it makes it a, a difficult situation um yeah. But that is an interesting thing that does exist in the real world. Is like, all right, I might, I might allow myself getting a, a, a shallow cut on the side if I can notice that he's not doing, putting a lot of power behind them to just run him through in the heart, you know. And so, yeah, it's it's an interesting, interesting thought process there. Um, but yeah, I remember uh, when, okay. no, no, you go. Well, it's just another example of the same thing, really. I can remember back from my LARP days uh, when I fought with a mace. Um, because it's a mace and the half is blunt, people think they can grab it. So I would hit someone, whack on the elbow, and he would then go, ha ha, and grab my mace. And I just thought, well, no, if you've just been whacked really hard on the elbow, 
with a mace, <laughs> you're not going to be in any position to, to grab the half of my mace. That's Sorry, mate, that's not going to happen. But they were going, ha-ha, I grabbed your mace, see? And in in the fight system we were using, he had maybe two points on that arm, so he took one point damage and then grabbed my mace. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there might be a couple, a number of other things going through your mind if you're getting pummeled on the arm with a flipping mace. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, all right, so next question there, Dylan. We'll, we'll um, there is a uh, Gambit who asks Shad if there a way to get a signed copy of your book. Uh, yes, but it will require meeting me in person at the moment. There's no uh, sold signed copies yet, and so if I'm doing a meet and greet, I and the, and the difficult thing is meeting me in person then because uh, lockdown, other things, and I'm not exactly traveling or but. Who knows in the future, but unfortunately, you would, you would need to meet me in person um, because I can't guarantee if you're going to post something out that I will even receive it or be able to post it back um, because it, it kind of opens the floodgates and then it takes way too much time. And I can't be spending all the time um, signing things and sending them back to people who are sending them to me and stuff. And so, yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult right now. It's, 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 there are challenges for signed copies, um, but I know people are wanting them. So... I don't know. I, yeah, there, there was one thing that me and my wife were trying to set up with uh, uh, an actual local bookstore that we could just deliver him a whole heap of signed copies and then you could purchase signed copies through our website. It's a lot of work to set up and say, so, uh, hopefully I'll be able to sort something out. Yeah, that, that's, that's that for now. There's also uh, Jay Hadley. Are you, too, are you worried that being too faithful to the book may hurt the film? Um, no, because, uh, we're, like, when it comes to adaptation, I knew from the get-go that you would have to make concessions in many areas because it's an adaptation. A book is not a film. A book is usually much longer. You need to cut stuff. You need to condense things. And so, uh, um, uh, I, my worry is, uh, I don't, I'm not worried about being too faithful to the book because we're not being too faithful to the book. We have made the appropriate con condensing and cuts and changes yes, and have. stuff. We have. Exactly. So... Um, uh, that will be that one. Um, but maybe one more question and then we'll continue back to uh, well, a, bit of a, a bit of a discussion. I, I had a few quick ones uh, that I'll answer. There's one uh, that was asking, uh, J Johnny Reb was asking about Scal and his involvement. Uh, Scal has addressed it in his last live stream. He has personal things that he's taking care of, so he's not currently working on with us on that project uh there's also uh, a few people that have asked about the uh, song lyric contest that we have made um and we have selected uh, a few and we have contacted them and we're working with them to make a song it's just taking a lot longer than we were expecting um and then a, a one last question for both of you. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Canada and how long will you be in Canada when filming comes? I have been to Canada once. I went to Niagara and Toronto and I danced on the deck of a ship that went around the lake uh, next to Toronto, that uh, danced to a jazz band, the Climax Jazz Band. I even remember the name of the band. Um, and and the bass player was called chris daniels there you go um and i i expect if i'm going to go all that way i will want to uh, to see a bit more uh there, there's videos to make with in with the likes of shad um it's not impossible that i might even meet the illustrator of uh in search of hannibal who lives in canada unfortunately he lives quite some distance from where you plan to shoot but you know it's, it's in Canada, so it's a bit like saying, "Oh, well, while while you're in Berlin, you may as well see Moscow." But yeah, even so, um, <laughs> it's being on the continent, um, <laughs> it is a long way to go for a, a, a short gig. I mean, one one thing that really appeals to me about Canada is it's the, the, the large areas of wilderness, and uh, something which enormously appeals to me is is spending some while trying to live uh, using primitive technology. Uh, but there's just one just one little niggling thing uh, apparently if you stay for more than about four days in any one place in canada you know building shelters and and putting out traps and so forth and and you know, doing the hunter-gatherer stuff 
the bears find you. And I then was they... going to say, is it the bears? Because it's <laughs> like, like, that would be my worry. <laughs> Canada is really appealing, apart from being eaten by a bear, which is not the way I want to go. Well, I haven't <laughs> been eaten by a bear yet. I haven't seen no, one No, but you ever. live in a city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been in the wild, too. Yeah, well, I'm told I'm told it's about four days. You know, if you're if you're trapping and, and hunting and building up. I've know, never gone barriers, on, uh, hunting, though. So, uh, yeah, the bears would be my concern. I mean, even in Australia, though, it's the snakes that are concerned. But, you know, you, you get used to ways to deal with those. Um, but sorry, I, 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 was there anything else you want to mention, Lloyd? Oh, uh, uh, no. So I am, I would go for the filming plus a, a week or two. It's probably the most I could I could spare, really. Mm. And that would be about the same for me. Um, the the shooting uh, window is, what, two weeks, Dylan, I believe? Uh, it's and one then... week plus uh, one rehearsal week before, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. And... And then uh, probably in addition, another two weeks um, uh, that I'd try and combine. Maybe I might be able to combine it with uh, a detour to the US to visit certain um, associates, but that's up in the air. So, uh, um, uh, and I would need more firm dates as well. As to if I've ever been to Canada, no, I've never been to Canada. Um, this will be the first trip there. I've been to the US. Um, and so uh, I'm looking forward to it. In fact, there is a very, very nice castle-like hotel that I might have to visit uh, because it, it, it looks like a castle. Well, it's not a real castle, but it's castle. No, it's, and it looks fancy. It, it's <laughs> castle-like, yes. It's <laughs> not a castle. Uh, well, yeah, but all the, if you come to Britain, all, all of the real castles... I know. Well, they're, that's... They're, that's... <laughs> yeah, but they're rubbish as film locations because they're all old. <laughs> <laughs> if it's meant to be the 13th century, don't you can't shoot it in a 13th century castle because it's it looks 700 years old. <laughs> that is that is very very true. In fact, I, like they they miss out on a lot of important um, facts about castles because of that. Like the fact that a lot of them were whitewashed on the outside, or, mm -hmm. or you know, and you've even pointed this out on the inside. They had paintings and murals and all this color and everything. Oftentimes. Well, but yeah, the inside it, would have been plastered. <laughs> exactly, and, uh, and 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 because people do film in like real located, you know, location castles, it's created a trope that it's always bare stone and it's dark and mm. dank and wet or, or damp at least, um, yeah. and and unfortunately has created a lot of misconceptions about castles as a result, which is unfortunate because oh, castles are awesome. I mean, you know, We're just going to have to wait for Get Along Castle to be finished and go oh, shoot there. It's looking great, Get Along. <laughs> That's exciting for me. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll be able to build a couple of my own. That's kind of my long-term well, goals. As well. <laughs>